Don't let one small part of your system take down your entire system. Let's take a look at the bulkhead pattern and various ways you can think about applying it to your architecture to help fault tolerance and to keep your system running. I'm Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com and the bulkhead pattern as illustrated by the hull of this ship allows us to create isolation. That means if we take on water in some particular bulkhead or compartment, it's isolated to that bulkhead, that compartment. We're not taking on water everywhere. We've created this isolation. A really typical example is that you usually have hot pass within your system, meaning parts of your system that are used more than others. If you get an abundance of requests to that part of your system, it can cause chaos to either your instance that you're running, even if you're load balanced, you have multiple instances or downstream services like your database, you get so many requests that you become overloaded, your system becomes unresponsive. And that really sucks for other users that are not working in that primary part of the system. Maybe they're kind of on the fringe and these requests are gonna fail because your entire system's unavailable from all those requests to some other part of your system. Before I jump in and explain how we can fix this with the bulkhead, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, Check out the link in the description. So we can fix this by creating a bulkhead, by defining isolation, creating isolation. And this is applicable even if you're using a monolith. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have physically deployable services. This applies even within a monolith. So let's say we have two instances here, but we're load balanced. So we could say, okay, this hot path, this heavy use part of our system that's under these particular routes, we're gonna define rules that they're always gonna go to one of the instances that we have deployed. So that way, if we do get overloaded and there's too much traffic happening to that main part of our app, even if it's a monolith, they're hitting one of those instances. We could have another part of our system that if it's different routes, they could hit a completely different instance that isn't getting overloaded and those requests are gonna to totally work fine. So again, it's just thinking about maybe what are the hot paths and maybe we wanna segregate and create isolation for those particular, those paths, those instances, Keep those separate. And I wanna drive this point home. You can do this with a monolith. It doesn't necessarily have to be services that are deployed separately. There's all kinds of different ways you can think about, okay, well, how do I create isolation? We can create isolation at our database level. So instead of having one database instance that we just keep scaling up, you can think about creating isolation. So if we have some hot path, for example, that has a lot of queries, let's say it's a lot of writes, we can separate that. That's its own database instance that's handling those particular feature sets, that part of our system that has that high load or maybe an influx load, and that everything else is in a separate database instance. This is actually pretty typical when you think about this isolation. If you have a multi-tenant software as a service, you likely have, a lot of people apply, having a database per tenant. It's the same idea. You may have heard of noisy neighbors, and it's not just applicable to multi-tenant, it is you have one tenant hammering the database and another tenant's affected by that. If you have that isolation to their own databases, you don't have the problem. Same type of thing in a large system. If you have one part of your system that's hammering the database, another part of your system's gonna be affected. You can create that isolation where you need to. This means you can think isolation in terms of compute as well as other infrastructure like your database and kind of mix and match what you need. So maybe you have a set of uh, tenants. If you have that type of system or set of users, they go to specific instances that hit a particular database. You can just keep mix and matching this like I was alluding to before. Maybe you have just a part of your system where you're gonna route particular traffic to particular instances so that it doesn't affect your entire system. It's all about creating isolation, mix and matching, and figuring out in your architecture how you do that. Another great example of creating isolation in terms of infrastructure is with your queues and creating different priorities. That means that maybe I have one queue that is a really high priority. We have some type of SLA, we have metrics on this in terms of processing time that we need to keep to a certain level. So we could have this high priority queue that we track very much differently and alarm on differently than our standard queue. Maybe we decide, oh, well, this high priority queue, it's getting a lot more uh, messages to it. Our throughput's going down. Maybe at this point, we need to add another consumer to that consumer group so that we can process those messages to that high queue faster, more concurrently. Same idea, just creating isolation. So you don't have just one queue, you have different kind of queues really by SLA. Another important aspect of creating partitions, this isolation, is when you need to make calls externally to third-party services. And one of the major issues is latency and timeouts. I'm gonna have a link to another video at the end of this video that talks about resilience and third-party services. But the gist being is that you're making a call to a third-party ser service, and let's say it normally takes 100 milliseconds to make that request. 
on a good day. Then all of a sudden out of nowhere, it's taking five, 10, 15 seconds. That can have a significant impact on your system. So the idea being is that a lot of times this could be because there's degraded performance by a third party service, as well as they're throttling you. So it's not just like, hey, throw on a retry so we can make another request if, we, if the request fails, is that we wanna throttle ourselves so that we're only making requests that we know are gonna succeed quickly. This means that in code, you could be creating that isolation as well. In this case, I'm using an example of throttling. So I'm using Poly here as the example. There's all kinds of different libraries, depending on the platform that you're using, that will do something similar, where I'm creating basically a currency limiter. At this example, I'm saying, okay, I'm only gonna allow one actual um, to run at a time, and my queue limit's gonna be 100. I'm just iterating over 10 times to make a call to google.ca. When I actually run this, you'll see that it's just gonna run one at a time. So I just did one iteration at a time because my queue I was only allowing to do one at a time. If I change this to 10 and rerun it, now we can see that we're gonna run most of these all concurrently, all at the exact same time. So depending on what your third-party services are doing, you may wanna be creating code level isolation by actually throttling yourself for example, of things like making external calls to third-party services. One way of making your system more fault tolerant is creating isolation, defining those partitions, and it can happen multiple ways. It can be at the compute level, at your infrastructure, data level, or queues, kind of all at that physical level. You can do it there, but it also exists in code and how you're creating that separation. Ultimately, what you're doing in code to create isolation, as well as your physical deployed architecture, can help avoid cascading failures. It's really easy to have one part of your system take down the entire system. But be clear, there's always trade-offs, and the trade-off here is you're adding complexity. Anytime you wanna add isolation, these partitions, you're gonna be adding complexity somewhere. That could be in code where you're creating this isolation, or your physically deployed architecture. You're gonna be adding complexity. So be very sure on where you're adding this isolation and these bulkheads that, that there really is value for the complexity that you're gonna be adding. Ultimately, you need to think about your system, your architecture, and where you can add those bulkheads. If you need feedback on these type of things, you can get access to my private Discord server by joining my channel, and you interact with other software developers about topics like this, software architecture design, and ask these types of questions and get feedback. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've implemented bulkheads, let me know in the comments. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.